thought I'll give you a quick summary of a couple of really good books that I've been reading over the last few weeks. I like to read a lot of books at once and kind of alternate between them. I find that it gives me a lot of kind of a breadth of ideas. And uh, let's get into it. So the first book that really impacted me over um, the coaching thing was the book Expert Secrets by Russell Bronson. Now, Russell is an entrepreneur that's built a company worth a couple hundred million dollars called ClickFunnels. So you probably heard about them all over the world. Um, If I remember correctly, it's the largest, the fastest growing uh, software as service company, basically like uh, Airbnb or, you know, uh, any company that offers an app. The fastest growing software as service company that doesn't even have uh, VC funding. So there's no venture capital. It's all money that he raised all through sales. So in Expert Secrets, he basically gives you the entire philosophy and practical application of how to actually run your business as an expert, uh, whether you're a coach or um, even just selling regular items and how to incorporate information products to create situations where you actually close sales and by getting paid to market. So you, you have such a good funnel that you actually get paid to market yourself on Facebook. Now, the second book that really profoundly impacted me is High Performance Habits by Brendan Borchard. Borchard, not sure how to say the last name. And he supposedly did the most extensive research on high performance and success in all areas of life, you know, kind of all cause success. And he managed to beautifully sum it up into six habits that high performance uh, use to reach the results. Now, he's not saying that this is what these are habits that high performers do. He says these are the habits that create high, high performance. So if you feel like you're not performing you know, to the max of your ability, you need to adopt the habits that he shows. So basically three inner habits and three social habits. Profoundly deep book, uh, very simple but very profound. And he's extremely practical in it. I love it. Uh, the next book is Maps of Meaning by Jordan and Belf- Jordan, sorry, uh, Jordan Peterson, the famous psychoanalyst that got really public in uh, the last mo- the last year after um, vigorously fighting a bill in Canada called B- C- Bill C sixteen, which basically forces you and me, and anybody who is in Canada, to refer to people by their selected pronouns. So what that means is I can choose to be called um, Sarah Both Robbie, and if you don't call me Sarah Both Robbie, then I can actually find you. Or, you know, I can basically make up my own gender, to be more correct. So I can, instead of he or she, I can be called Z or Zer or seer or and you have to respect that and you have to um to follow it you're compelled to say that or else um for example if you're a business owner and one of your employees fails to refer to some uh you know so-called bi gender gender fluid um unicorn type person you know you fail to refer to him as a z so call him a he instead of a Z, then you, your employee employer sorry could actually get fined up to hundred thousand dollars 
for um, doing that. And they say that, you know, you can do that, but you're not going to get in jail or, you know, it's just a fine. But you know what happens when you don't pay a fine? Um, the It has to be taken by force. So the end result, if you don't pay it, is jail. So the book Map of Meanings, Maps of Meaning, sorry, um, again, extremely profound book. He tears apart the very fabric of how you, of beingness, of uh, what, what is called phenomenology, basically the study of subjectiveness and how you relate to the world. And he argues that science is actually uh, only able to teach us how things are, not how things should be. It's called, uh, um, it's called creating an, an art from an is. So basically taking what is and saying this because it's like this, this is how it should be. But science can't really do that for us. And he actually makes a really good case for how mythology was used to um, allow people to know how to actually act themselves in the world, to carry themselves. Uh, so people didn't really know how the sun worked, how the planet is, you know, biology, things like that. But they did know very profoundly how to act. And he lays a really beautiful case, and you see how he talks about things like socialism and communism, which are ideas that are based on atheism and very extreme rational thinking. And these ideas collapsed in just a few decades and led to uh, close to a billion people dying, while ideas like, um, you know, original Christian ideas are still here to this day. So stupid ideas are not supposed to last. <laughs> And, um, again, it's a really profound book on everything from uh, how you relate, yeah, reality works, how, how you relate to things, how to um, even have an argument with someone and not having it lead to destruction. The next book is Ultramind Solution by, by Mark Hyman, a famous doctor, who really revolutionizes the idea of treating your brain. Um, he basically says that your brain is connected to your body and everything from autism to depression to bipolar disorder to stress and anxiety, everything can be healed or at least greatly improved by fixing things like your diet and hormonal balance and how pills are a lot less effective than we thought and they just fix symptoms rather than the problem itself, sometimes even exacerbating it. So again, really, really good read. The next book is Unshakable by Tony Robbins. Um talking about how to create financial abundance for the future, creating uh, an investment account based on index funds and really showing you how easy and possible it is to retire a millionaire even if you never had a big income, you know, by just saving a couple hundred dollars a month. Again, life-changing book. The next book is Your Brain on Sex by Stanley Siegel. Also very profound. The book talks about how we can actually heal ourselves through our sexual desires and fantasies and how to actually communicate that with your partner successfully and how it can make life much, much better through... Using fantasies to understand how you're, I'll put it this way. He says that our fantasies originate mostly in childhood and things that 
hurt us, like, for example, people abandoning us, turn into fantasies of either um, us, you know, dominating people or us uh, being subjected to them or things like, you know, traumas like being abused lead us to wanting to having fantasies of abusing people or being abused ourselves and how we use these fantasies to relive relive those experiences but from a place of power because uh, this is something that actually Jordan Peterson talks about uh, the guy who wrote the book Maps of Meaning there's been many many studies that actually show that when you enter into a stressful experience if you chose to enter it, you're going to use different parts of your brain. You know, different parts are going to light up than if you react to the situation. So, for example, there's a scary call that you need to make to your partner or your banker or, you know, to get a job. And if you make that call by choice, you actually choose to face the fear and do it, the parts of your brain that are going to wake up are mostly related to um, exploration and bravery and uh, initiative. And on the contrary, if you are forced into that situation, for example, the you know that fee that you owe to the bank, now they call you and you have to deal with that thing you've uh, delayed because you're scared of it, now you're going to different parts of the brain are going to light up. They're mostly related to trauma and resistance and fear and, and just kind of not being functional. So this is why using sexual fantasies um, allows us to experience traumas, but from a place where you choose to, um, to feel it and feel empowered. Again, great, great book. Really good book. Uh, the second, the second, the, the next one, I think we're at like six, is Zero Sugar Diet, the 14-Day Plan to Flatten Your Belly, blah, 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 um, by David Zin, 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 if I'm uh, correct. Um, this book... Sorry, this is David Zinchenko. David Zinchenko, sorry. Now, this book is about, uh, as it says, uh, zero sugar diet. And while I'm not really a big fan of the idea of not eating sugar at all, it did, in you know just 30 minutes, maybe one hour of reading, uh, completely open my eyes to how much additive sugar I was getting and various negative repercussions for that so using because just because of this book I reduced by sh my sugar intake in about half which makes it a lot easier for me to stay lean uh, makes me feel better and also again just long term it's a lot healthier and finally the Art of the Argument by Stefan Molyneux is a wonderful book from one of the last truly vocal yet wise philosophers left. Stefan Molyneux hosts a show called Free Domain Radio for many years now, and he's very, very successful. This book is about arguing. Uh, this guy's an incredibly good debater. He's one of the best debaters I've seen. And in this book, he says why it's so important to know how to debate and also profoundly breaks down the how a debate works, gives tons of examples of how to properly debate. And this, book's ju this book just allows you to properly articulate yourself in a way where again either reaching uh he calls it there's there's uh, two types of arguments one where you argue for facts and one where you argue for value so facts meaning 
helping people realize why um, this is true and this is not true. So why you should do this versus that because this is not true, this is true versus uh, value arguments where it's like, should we go to this movie or that movie? And again, really, really good book. Highly recommended. All of these books are really enjoyed. Um, you know, you can't even put them down. And that's what I'm reading <laughs> at the moment. So I'd love to know what you're reading as well. Feel free to tell me in the comments. Uh, I have really good summaries of most of these books. If you want to get them, just comment or email me and I'll send them to you. And uh, thanks for watching and please uh, subscribe if you haven't. See you soon.